Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. The apostle Peter in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5 says to every Christian, Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer of spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So then we see from these words of Scripture that it is our duty as priests unto God. Peter calls us a holy priesthood here. In other passages uh, in his writings, he says we are a royal priesthood, that is a kingly priesthood. But as priests unto God, we are to offer up sacrifices. And it is our duty then to pray. And that is part of being a priest. The priests prayed for God's people. And tonight, the focus of the message is upon being an intercessor, uh, praying for our family, praying for those that do not know the Lord, praying for our government. There is so much that we see in the world around us and that needs changing, that things that are set in motion, even perhaps even very recently, and things are continuing to get worse. But we as Christians are the light of the world. We are to be salt. We are to stay this ongoing of corruption that is around us. And we have that tool by which God works, and that is through prayer. No matter what your condition is, a person may be even laying in a hospital bed, and yet they can exercise that calling that they have as a priest in prayer. But it's not only prayer that we're going to be talking about. It's talking about being an intercessor, praying for others. Not only just an, an intercessor, but being a persistent intercessor. And so as persistent intercessors, we must continue in prayer for the things that concern us in our families, in the world around us. It has been well said by someone other than myself that intercessory prayer is more than simply praying a few words on behalf of someone and then moving on to other requests. And never praying for that request again. In fact, I've heard it say that you don't need to pray more than once about anything. The Lord knows what your prayer request is. In fact, some would say if you don't, uh, if you ask repeatedly, it might even suggest that you're being unbelieving and that you don't believe that God heard your first prayer. That is so false if you hear someone say that. We are taught as the people of God to make intercession and to make it with persistence. In other words, when it seems like it was with this lady, that the Lord has not heard our prayer, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't keep praying the same prayer. In fact, we see from this passage of Scripture this evening that they, it teaches us that we are to continue to persist in praying. The Apostle Paul made intercession for the saints as he writes to the Colossians in Colossians 1.9. And he said to them, 
I do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of God, that you may be filled with all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And so then our text this evening has to do with a mother's making persistent intercession for the healing of her daughter. And that was grievously tormented by a demon. The actual language could be literally translated that this young lady, the daughter, was badly demonized. Now, regarding the context of this passage of Scripture, we have the Lord Jesus Christ leaving his ministry in Galilee, and he did so because he was greatly uh, disrupted in his ministry by the Pharisees who were trying to ask trick questions and tried to call uh, him into question about his ministry and put him on the defense. And so our Lord Jesus Christ then takes a, a break from his ministry in Galilee and he goes into the land of the Canaanites in the cities of Tyre and Sidon. That's along the Mediterranean coast. And so the lesson our Lord teaches us in this passage of Scripture is that Jesus' ministry was primarily to the Jews. Yet, he goes into the land of the Gentiles, who, and his ministry, we are told by Paul in the book of Romans, was to the circumcision. Jesus preached the gospel to the Jews. And yet, he takes this opportunity to go and minister in the land of Canaan. And... We see, as the scripture says, which we read, he runs into a lady, that is, a Syrophoenician, as it is said in the book of Mark. She is a Gentile, and she's begging the Lord to heal her daughter. There are three things that I would like for us to note that would be helpful in our making intercessory prayer and persistent intercession on the things that concern us. Three things. First, I want us to note here that the mother cried unto the Lord for mercy with an acceptable prayer. I believe there are some prayers that are unacceptable. But the prayer that is prayed here, as we shall see, is an acceptable prayer. Secondly, the mother did not refrain from making intercession for her daughter, even though there were several discouragements that were laid in her way. She was not discouraged. She did not turn back because of discouragements. And thirdly, I want us to note that the mother persisted in crying to Jesus until Jesus answered her cry because her faith was great. First, as I said, her prayer was an acceptable prayer. You'll see it, if you will, looking at verses 21 through 22. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman <coughs> of Canaan came out of the coast and cried unto him, saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Now we note that this whole incident came about by the divine providence of God. The Lord was brought into the land of the Gentiles. And this lady heard Jesus came and she wanted to have her daughter healed you note in verse 21, Matthew 15, it says, Then Jesus went thence into Canaan of the Galilees, of the Gentiles, and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. Now Mark's gospel, in recording the same event, says in Mark 7, verses 24 through 26, that Jesus entered into a house and would have no man know it. 
but he could not be hid. Now, he did not want anyone to know where he was because he didn't want to be pursued by his adversaries that were interrupting his ministry. And then Mark goes on in verse 25. Mark 7 says, For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. There was a woman, a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Now, I want us to note a twofold, the twofold misery of this woman. First, she was a Gentile. And in the eyes of a Jew, as we shall see, they were no better than a dog. Uh, she was of the stock of the people that were cursed of God that we read in Genesis 9.25. Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brother. She was, as Paul says, an alien from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. One thing I'd just like to pause and just make a note here, and that is this, to say when you think there's no hope and you're, you've prayed, you prayed, you prayed, and you don't see any, any answers or perhaps the situation about your, you're praying about seems impossible. You just can't see how that it could ever be changed. But prayer does Make a change. And we cannot judge whether there is hope or no hope. We pray because we're called of God to pray. This lady did not, humanly speaking, fit into those to whom the gospel was going. She was not a Jew. But she, of hope against hope, believed that the Lord would hear her. Her misery was that she was a Gentile. The second thing about the misery that she was undergoing was that her daughter was possessed by a devil. Day in, day out, she was vexed with this misery. In spite of her misery, we see then in verse 22, the mother's prayer is an acceptable prayer. Note, if you will, verse 22 says that she cried unto him, unto Jesus, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Her prayer was acceptable because we see that it came from a humble heart. She knew that she was unworthy. There was nothing that she could hold Jesus to to that he would hear her prayer. She was a Gentile. Everything, humanly speaking, was against her. But hope against hope, she believed that Jesus would hear her prayer. She grounded her request, though, upon the mercy of God. So there's the answer about if you think there is no hope, just remember this, that God is a merciful God. Remember when Jonah was told to go to Nineveh, and then Nineveh did repent. And then uh, remember how Jonah responded. He seemed very uh, disgruntled about their repentance. And he said to the Lord, he said, I knew that you were a merciful God. So the only thing, and you, this is not by any means to be diminished by saying only, but her only hope was God's mercy. And that's true of God's people as well. When we come to God asking Him of things in prayer, we're coming for His mercy's sake. And she knew. I don't know where she got her understanding about Jesus being in the area. I don't know how much she knew uh, about the Lord, but we do know in this prayer, it being at a an acceptable prayer, she recognized Jesus Christ as the Lord. 
She said, oh, Lord. That is the same as saying, oh, oh my God. Thou son of David. <coughs> she recognized that he is the son of God, the son of David that was promised in the scriptures. She knew enough to know that he was Israel's Messiah. And then she places her need before the Lord. She said, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Her prayer was acceptable because she humbled herself. But her prayer was also acceptable because it was an intercessory prayer. I want you to note there, she says, have mercy on me. Intercessory prayer is making the matter that you're praying about, if it regards somebody else's need, though it be their need, <coughs> in reality, when you're making intercession, you're making it your need. And that's exactly what she did. She didn't say, have mercy on my daughter, the mother. She said, have mercy on me. When we make intercession, we ought to consider, and we pray for others, <coughs> We are being intercessors. But we shall see that the mother was not only an intercessor, but she was a persistent intercessor. We need to keep praying. And so we see here, her prayer was acceptable because it was an intercessory prayer. But as I said, she recognized the divinity and the humanity of Jesus Christ. And we know that she believed that Jesus is the Lord, that he is God. And Paul says <coughs> in 1 Corinthians 12, 3, no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Here we have a miraculous working of God in the Holy Ghost, making it clear that she believed that Jesus is God. How she got that knowledge and understanding it could have been very uh, supernatural, of course. But it demonstrates that she knew that Jesus was not just a man. He was the Lord and that he's also the man. We see also that her prayer was acceptable, not only because she recognized the demand, demanded. Thank you so very much. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. We need, when we come to pray, we need to not pray to God as someone that is an unknown. We must know who he is. We must acknowledge him as God. And she had that knowledge that he is the Lord and that he is also true man. Secondly, I want us to note in verses 23 through 27, the mother did not refrain from making intercession Remember, we're as intercessors. We're going to be, this is what, I, after we get through with this message, I want you to go away and take this message with you and, and know, yes, and I know you know you're an intercessor, but we want to make clear in verses 23 to 27 that we want to be like this lady that was praying to this lady from uh, Canaan, a Gentile lady. We want to be intercessors, but we want to be persistent. We can't just pray, pray off and on. We need to be persistent. And she would not be put aside by any discouragement. Now, I'm going to want us to note four discouragements that were laid before her. Perhaps others would fall along the wayside and and just give up. Discouragement is probably one of the main reasons why people don't pray like they should. The first discouragement we see in verse 23. She was crying out to God. My daughter is grievously vexed by a devil. And so Jesus heard the words, but he did not respond. Note in verse 23, 
He answered her not a word. And so I know, Christians, when you've prayed, you've probably prayed about things and you just didn't see uh, any answers right away. And perhaps you just stopped praying about it. But you know, if it was important enough to pray about in the first place, don't pray. I mean, don't stop praying and just let it go. As intercessors, we're going to be persistent, right? She was not turned away, even though Jesus answered her not. <laughs> Christians in the scriptures have had this to deal with when they pray. Job had this. He didn't sense the presence of God, like God had left him. This lady could have felt like I'm just being abandoned. He's not an answering me. Job had that same feeling. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there and backward, but I cannot find him on the left hand where he doth work, and I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. God does not always answer our prayers the first time we ask. And even we may be praying for, for years. And especially if it has to do with the salvation of a family member or a very urgent need, never give up. I hope that you have prayer lists when you pray. And things that you pray on an ongoing basis, have it written down. And never give up. Be a persistent intercessor. The second discouragement was that the disciples, Jesus didn't answer. The second thing that would be a discouragement to anyone, the disciples said, send her away, for she crieth after us. She did not cry once or twice. The sense of the language there is that she repeatedly cried out. So that the disciples wanted her to stop it. That she's interfering with the work of the Lord. She prayed and would not be turned away by discouragement. The third discouragement we see in verse 24. Jesus said to her, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And we find that in Romans 15, 8, that's exactly what Paul says. Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision, that is, of the Jews, for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. She was a Gentile, yet she cried out to God, would not be discouraged even though a Gentile and that salvation was of the Jews, at that time, before Jesus went to the cross and was raised, the gospel was not going out to the Gentiles, at least as far as the commission is given to the church, until after the resurrection of Christ and his ascension into heaven. And so, after this third discouragement, she, and Mark brings this out, actually cast herself down at the feet of Jesus. She went to his feet and prayed and worshipped him and said three words. God, help me. She felt like she was out of work. She could not argue against those discouragements. But God gave her the grace to persist. So we ought to as well. Keep praying. But there's another discouragement that came, the fourth, is that Jesus said, it is not meat to take, that is suitable, to take the children's bread and to give it to dogs. Now, in the Old Covenant, uh, the Gentiles were viewed as dogs for the reason that they were the most unclean animal. An unclean animal was an animal uh, that did not part the hoof 
did not chew the could. Even a pig parts the hoof, doesn't chew the could, but so that was what clean animals were. So a hog is on that with that standard of one creature that does choose a could and doesn't choose a could, but does part the hoof. A dog does neither. And so if you were called a dog, you were considered the most vile of creatures. And that's the way the <clears throat> Jews were taught to believe regarding the Gentiles that they were not to come in amongst God's people because of their being spiritually unclean. Now note in verse 28, Jesus then answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto you even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Matthew Poole says, The greatness of the mother's faith appears. Great is thy faith, our Lord says. Poole says that the mother's faith appeared great in two ways. First, in that she had no little means, so small a revelation, being a pagan, she did not have an understanding of the gospel and of the scriptures. She had so little of the word of God. It's through the faith in God's word that we have faith that is acceptable unto God. But she had perhaps very precious little knowledge. So in that way, it was great for considering that she did not have access to, as far as we know, the things of God and the word of God. Secondly, in that she would not give over, though she gave, or she was given three repulses by the Lord. So as she said, like Jacob, I will not let thee go. So this very clearly parallels Jacob in his wrestling with the angel. I will not let thee go. So if you want a really good example of persistence in being an intercessor, it is in the life of Jacob. He wrestled until the dawn, all night. I will not let thee go, Jacob said, until you bless me. And as he, like a prince, so she, like a princess, prevailed with God and obtained the thing that she desired. And so, after these Repulses, then Jesus gave that we were given to her at first. He now declares that the woman, her prayer is answered. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. Jesus gave the mother the desire of her heart. It was through true faith in the ability of our Lord Jesus Christ to heal. Note lastly, Jesus then gives assurance then to the mother that her daughter is immediately healed. Now this is in Mark's gospel parallel with the Matthew passage that we have, Matthew 15. Mark 7 verses 29 through 30 where Jesus says to the mother, for this saying, go thy way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter and when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed. So then, dear Christian, by way of application, this message of being persistent in making intercession, I hope after hearing this message that you will want to follow the same example and to remember Jacob's Example as well, how that he rested, wrestled with the Lord. The Apostle Paul urges Christians to be intercessors. He writes to the Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. He says, you are to be praying always with all prayer 
silent prayer, private prayer, public prayer, all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Paul says to the Ephesians, you are to pray for all saints. We should pray for one another in our churches. We should pray for churches in general that God will send his blessing upon the preaching of the word and bringing lost sinners to faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ expressed his concern about our praying and not ceasing when he said, when the scripture says in Luke 18 verse 1, that Jesus spake a parable unto his disciples to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to cease. We should never cease praying. We should continue. Thirdly, by way of application, I want us to note here that Jesus Christ then promises all those who come to him by true faith, their prayers shall be answered. One of my favorite scriptures on this matter of prayer is Luke 11. Verses 1 through 13. And also John 14, verses 13 through 14. Where Jesus says, the one to whom we pray and through whose name we pray, Jesus says, And whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything, ask anything, in my name, I will do it. You remember, there were those who said, if you do this, I will give you up to the half of my kingdom. You know those characters of the Bible. One of them was Herod, and then uh, in the Old Testament as well. But the Lord Jesus Christ says, rejoice, for I have given you the kingdom. Not half, but I've given to you the kingdom. Ask what you will. As long as it's based upon Scripture. And lastly, I would like for us to note that we may be a persistent intercessor. We should never forget that Jesus Christ is ever living to make intercession for you. In heaven, he is making intercession for you. We have that in 1 John 2.2. 2. He's our advocate at the right hand of God. Now in Hebrews 7, 24 and 25, the scripture says, because Jesus continues ever, that is eternally, he has an unchangeable priesthood, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth eternally to make intercession for them. He's in heaven now, making intercession. He will make intercession for his people as long as this world exists and as long as we are on this planet. planet he will make intercession for us. So, beloved of God, the lesson to you and to me that must be learned from this Canaanite woman is this. Be an intercessor, but persevere. Be persistent. Don't quit. Continue to make intercession for those things that you pray for. We should learn that from this that per, it is persistence that always wins out at the throne of grace. So, as Jesus invited us to ask and to seek and to knock, I leave you then with this promise of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you keep asking, so will he give unto you. As you keep seeking him, you shall find. As you keep knocking, it shall be opened unto you. Amen. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father.